36. Four, three. I'm John, and tonight I want answers about Jews. There's no stopping us now because we're live. John wants, John wants answers. Give John answers. Give John, answers. John, wants answers. John wants answers. Give John answers now. Check your calendar. If it says May 9th, 2013, then we're live. My guest tonight is Barbara Canaster. She's my expert tonight because she is a nice Jewish lady. Thanks for coming on the show, Barbara. My pleasure. If you've never seen the show before, the show's like a courtroom drama. Now, normally I'd go on, this is our, our shtick, about how I'm the prosecutor, et cetera, et cetera. But the Jewish people have been prosecuted enough throughout history, so I want to avoid saying that. Thank you. Um, I'm the guy who wants answers. My guest is the expert witness. And you at home are the jury. It's your job to convict or acquit the Jewish people. See, it's, it's all falling apart. <laughs> <laughs> we'll be taking your tweets. You can tweet us at John Wants Answer. There's no S on the end, because the S is for suck, and we don't. So send us your tweets, your questions about the Jewish people, etc., and we will answer your questions here on the show. If you're the first person to tweet in asking for a headshot, you will get an autographed headshot of me. I'll autograph it and send it to you. And our guest, Barbara Canaster, has agreed that if you want a headshot of her, you can ask for one, and we'll get one made and sent off to you as soon as possible. If you don't like Twitter, and I don't blame you, you can send us a message instead on the website. Go to johnwantsanswers.com, click on Contact, and you can send us a message that way. Um, also, while you're on John Wants Answers, why not watch all of our old past episodes? They're great. This show could not be made possible without the continuing generous support of our executive producers, Brian West Pafal and Lisa Tamaki. All right, now that we have that out of the way, our first case, John versus the Jews. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, um, so usually on our show, before each topic, it's, it's like John versus the topic. And this, it, now it's Jewish people. And so it sounded like I was against Jewish people. But I'm not. Okay. I'm a fan. Good. Uh, so there's a bunch of different words. Uh, I want you to tell me the difference between them. There's Judaism, Jewish, and Jew. So Judaism is the name of the religion. Okay. People who uh, adhere to the tenets of Judaism are Jews or Jewish people. Okay. So I can call someone Jewish or a Jew, and that's fine. Absolutely. Um, is there things I shouldn't call them? Yeah, there's a lot of words you wouldn't want to call them. Are there words I wouldn't know that I shouldn't call them? No. Okay. No, most of them you would have heard, and so. if it sounds a little dicey, <laughs> just don't use it. <laughs> So is Judaism a religion or ethnicity? Well, it's actually some of both. It is a religion, mm -hmm. um, but there are a lot of people, probably the majority, that consider themselves cultural Jews or secular Jews. So that mm -hmm. means they consider themselves Jewish. They were born Jewish or converted to Judaism, but they're not really observant. They don't necessarily go to services or they don't keep mm -hmm. kosher or um, follow any of the other observances of the religion, but they consider mm. themselves Jewish. They might go to services for one holiday a year, or they might keep kosher for Passover, mm -hmm. or they might light the candles for Hanukkah, but they okay. wouldn't really be religious otherwise. So you can be both. Okay. Um, now, if you are born from Jewish parents, then you are, are Jewish, right? So. Technically, most of the denominations of Jews, if your mother is Jewish, then you are born Jewish. It has to be mother. It has to be mother, because okay. you always know who your mother is. So if your mother is Jewish, then mm -hmm. you are born Jewish. If your father is not, um, there are some denominations of Judaism that wouldn't consider you Jewish. Some would. Okay. And there are some denominations that if only your father is Jewish, you are still considered Jewish. So 
it kind of depends what you're trying to get out of it. If you are comfortable considering yourself a Jew, even if only your father was Jewish, there are many synagogues that will accept that as, as enough. Okay. And, a, and a synagogue is what I would call a church. Well, right. I mean, it, it, that's the, the physical building where Jews right. go to pray. Okay. Um, now, if my parents were not Jewish and I wanted to become a Jew, is there like a big process to go through? Yes. So if you're an adult, it's obviously much, much more complicated because um, to be converted, uh, you would have to take a class, understand all the things that are required about being Jewish. Um, you would have to present yourself in front of a, um, what's called a Beit Din, which is kind of a, a judgment council. It's three rabbis. And uh -huh. they would quiz you and see if you really knew what you want, were getting into. Uh -huh. um, and then there's the ritual things you'd have to do. Um, if you were not circumcised, you would have to be. Uh -huh. If you were circumcised, there is a ritual drawing of blood anyway. Oh, okay. And then um, there's immersion in what's called a mikvah, which is a specially prescribed kind of tub of, of rainwater. And you have to strip down, get completely nothing between you and the water. You get dunked under the water. The rabbis say a prayer over you, and then you can become officially converted. As a child, obviously, you don't have to answer all the questions. If you were the kind of person who cannot be circumcised, uh -huh. is there an equivalent? The immersion that? in the mikvah would do that. Okay. And, and kids have an easier time with all that. Yeah. When, um, when our daughter was converted, she was only 14 months old. So we had to promise in we had to promise the, the council of rabbis that we would raise her as a mm -hmm. Jew and she would get a Jewish education. And then she got dunked in the mikvah. But even though, so she's your daughter, mm -hmm. but she is uh, adopted. Yes. Which is why she had to go through that. Right. So if she was born, she wouldn't have to. Correct. Do stuff. Um, but in that case, at 14 months, it's kind of like that was done to her. Right. <laughs> it was done to her. Now, now usually... Uh, when children are converted, when they're not old enough to know, um, traditionally, when they reach the age of becoming an adult in the Jewish mm -hmm. religion, which is 13, um, after that age, she would be able to choose for herself whether or not she wanted to continue mm -hmm. um, following the observances of Judaism or not. But okay. pretty much anybody can choose so whether they want to continue being the religion they were born or converted into. Mm -hmm. So. Now, age 13, is that the bar mitzvah slash bat mitzvah? Right. Okay. And, and that's just the ceremony that um, there's a, a couple of things you do at the synagogue, and that um, officially makes you a Jewish adult. Mm -hmm. So it lets you participate, be counted in a group of 10 people. There's only certain prayers you can say when there are 10 Jews, 10 adult mm -hmm. Jews gathered together. So once you've reached bar or bat mitzvah age and had the the ceremony, then you can be counted among those 10. Is a bar mitzvah slash bat mitzvah, is that as rigorous as the adult trying to convert or oh, less rigorous? No. No, because there's really only one thing you have to do, and that's be called to the Torah. You don't have to read from the Torah. You don't have to give a speech. No. You don't have to do any of the other stuff. Really, all that has to happen is you get called to the Torah. You say a blessing. Somebody else reads the part of the Torah. You say the blessing at the end of it. That's really all you need. It's like a high school graduation. Yeah, you just walk up, get your diploma. It yeah. actually is 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 very easy. Mm -hmm. um, we make a bigger deal of it. We make our kids go through a whole lot more stuff than that. But you really don't have to do all that stuff. Okay. Um, now I want to talk a little bit more about the religion of okay. Judaism. So I understand that Christianity, Judaism, and Islam all have the same God. Is that so, Correct. so Judaism and Christianity, yes, mm -hmm. because, well, okay, so they all started from, they all came from Abraham, was considered, he was the first Jew, he was the first one that, that um, made a covenant with God, promised to do all the things that God told him to do, um, and his son, and then his son after that are considered the patriarchs. Of Judaism. Mm -hmm. well, at the same time Abraham had his son with his wife, he also had his son with his wife's handmaiden. And that's his name, good. his name, well that's what they did in those days actually. <laughs> okay. It was not really all that uncommon. Um, they also had their kids when they were over a hundred, so oh, wow. things were kind of <laughs> weird back then. But his 
son Isaac that he had with Sarah, his wife, was one of the three patriarchs. His son Ishmael that he had with the, the handmaid of his wife um, was sent away, but God was promised that he would be spared and a great nation would come from him. And that is what traditionally people believe that was the beginning of, of the Muslims. Okay. That's where that's where they separated. Mm-hmm. So if you, you know, follow that divergence, then they would have come from the same monotheistic belief. Okay. And then Jesus was Jewish. So mm-hmm. the gods that the the god that the Christians worship is the Jewish god. Okay. Um so I believe that the the Old Testament, what Christians consider the Old Testament is shared with Judaism. mm mm-hmm. Mhm. And also Islam, is that right? Well, their book is different. Oh, their, book is different. Their, their book is different, and it came to be written in a completely different way. Okay, and then the Christians then had the New Testament, and then the Jewish people had the Torah? The Torah is the Old Testament. Torah is the Old Testament? Yes. Do you have anything mm-hmm. new after that? No. Oh. Those so five books, and that's it. Okay. There's only five books in the five books. Old Testament? I know there's uh, Genesis. Genesis. What Exi- for? Exodus, uh-huh. Leviticus, which is the book of laws, mm-hmm. Numbers, mm-hmm. and then Deuteronomy. Okay. And then the, there's, a, there's books of prophets and psalms and those other things, but right. those are not part of the Torah. Oh, so the part of things are part of the Christian Old Testament. But the Christian Old Testament is the same as the Jewish Old Testament, the mm-hmm. same as the Jewish Torah. The mm-hmm. New Testament, as I understand it, is what the disciples of Jesus uh-huh. wrote yeah. after his crucifixion. Okay. So Jews don't. I should have studied that. the books in the Bible before I got here. It's okay. <laughs> um, so Christians believe that the Old Testament uh, foretold of a Messiah who would save them, and it turned out that guy was Jesus Christ. Now, the Jewish people don't believe he was the Messiah. So are they still waiting for a Messiah to come? Yes, they are. And there's a whole bunch of, the Messiah has to be a prophet. The Messiah has to come. So there's all, there's all sorts of rules when mm-hmm. the Messiah is going to come. And some of the rules are the world is going to be in terrible shape and everything mm-hmm. is going to go you know, straight downhill. And that's when the Messiah is going to come and rescue everything. Sounds like we need him soon. We could use him any time. Yeah. There are also some that think that it's when everything is going well. And because the world is doing so well, the Messiah will mm. come and say, yep, see, you're doing okay without me, but here I am anyway. What I'm worried about is, let's say this thing we consider the new Messiah arrives, the Christians will think he's the Antichrist, but the Jews will think he's the Messiah. And then terrible things will happen. Well, so... As I understand it, the Christians want there to be bad stuff because that's... It's all in Revelation. It's all in Revelation. The good times are near. And isn't that when there's the big battle of good versus evil mm-hmm. at Armageddon and and then everything, you know, the believers are saved and the non-believers all go to hell. Yeah. Um, the Jews don't believe that that's going to happen. but um, What do they believe is going to happen? Well, so when the Messiah comes... There will be peace. There won't be any more war. Mm -hmm. The Jews will be, all of the Jews will be back in Israel. They will have the ability to rebuild the temple and begin temple services again there, which is something that hasn't happened since, you know, 70 AD, I think. Not doing temple services now? No, because all that's left is one wall of the temple. The temple was, the the temple was destroyed twice in Jerusalem. Is this the Wailing Wall? That is the Wailing Ah, Wall, also known as the Western Wall. Okay. Um, And that's all that's left of the temple. And right now in Jerusalem, that wall is all that's left. And above the wall is the Temple Mount, which is where the most holy sites of Islam are in Jerusalem. Oh. So it's kind of tricky conference. right now to build a temple right where all yeah. of the holy sites of Islam are. So so when the Messiah comes, all of that will be solved and the temple will be rebuilt. So do the Jewish people believe in a heaven and a hell or not? No. So just it'll be more earth but they with be- temples. They believe in they believe in an afterlife but not a not punishing not a punishing afterlife. A, Reward afterlife. So everyone goes to heaven? Is that it? Or Basically, someone goes somewhere nice? 
they go to a nice place. <laughs> okay. They go to a nice place. They're reunited with family. It's all good. Okay. Well, we got to stop for a break now. Uh, when we come back, we're going to be taking your tweets. So stay right there. Okay. So we've got about two minutes. Okay. I've heard some beeping, so I think we have tweets. People are wanting answers Kay. about Judaism. Okay, that's a good one. People are actually Ribbon tweeting in with questions. Yeah. <laughs> How's it going so far? Am I being not... Oh, you're being fine. I'm not being combative, right? Not at all. Good, good. Because it, it started off very bad. <laughs> you know, no. John versus the Jews. No. Only four? Could be taken off the air. <laughs> this could be baseball, too. So pretty much normal. I got six and calls. And even Jewish baseball <laughs> questions. <laughs> Okay. That's it, right here. <laughs> oh, I got another, another one. We're, we're full of questions tonight. Wow. Okay. Some people are, have questions from before the show even started. Did John Bowman break, uh, where do you want me to bury that dead body that you gave me? The dead body? Yeah. Body and a wooded area? Oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> I, you know what? Whenever I drive through Oregon, that's what I'm thinking. This would be a good place to bury the area body. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Can I borrow your car? <laughs> no, I don't <laughs> want the evidence in my car. <laughs> that's why I said for you to bury it. And we're back. And we're going to take your tweets and messages and Facebook comments. So I already have some Facebook comments to start off with. Before the show started, I said I was going to talk about Jewish people. And so I have a question here. Um, please explain why Safeway puts all Jewish things on sale for any given Jewish holiday. We don't need chocolate coins at Passover, nor macho, matcha, matcha? at Hanukkah. By the way, Hanukkah is not an important holiday. School teachers made it so to merge with Christians and Christmas and winter solstice. Do you notice that? That people put everything that's Jewish on sale during a particular holiday? I have not noticed that. Okay. Um, there's not, most stores don't have a very big section of Jewish food anyway. Mm -hmm. Although, depending on where the supermarket's located, you might, like near where my synagogue is um, in Saratoga. There's a Lucky's right there that actually has quite a big kosher food section, specifically mm. because they know there's lots of Jews that shop for kosher food around there. So right. it's in their best interest to Sounds have that like much the right food. Thing to do. But I had not noticed that. Okay, we have a bunch of tweets. Um, why doesn't anyone mention the other six million people who died during the Holocaust? So I'm getting to the Holocaust later. Okay. And we can talk about the other six million okay. that you won't have mentioned the first time. I would be happy to mention them. <laughs> um, a guy named, oh, this is how coincidental, Beth Canaster, same last name as yeah. you. Um, Somebody is watching. He said, Kyle is Jewish, not Stan. Oh. <laughs> not that you said Stan was Jewish. Okay. So the Kyle is a Jewish one. See, I let him watch South Park. I didn't watch. Okay. Um, <laughs> the flirty girl relays a message saying, Josh Hitchin wants an autographed headshot, please. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Is it, well, who, of who though? Of me or of you? <laughs> we'll, I guess. We'll I know. guess they'll have to tweet back. How do you kosher a microwave? That is a really good question. Um, I know how to kosher an oven. You just turn it on really, really. You turn it on to its highest um, setting, and you, you let burn it burn off all the non-kosher stuff. It burn off all the non-kosher stuff, and it. You have to keep it burning for an hour, an hour and a half. But I've actually never koshered my microwave. It's like a self oven. Oh. Probably there's something similar, but I don't, that's a question I do not know the answer to. I bet the internet knows, though. I don't know. Am I being told something from the producer? Hello? Oh, okay. Um, all right. Well, those are our tweets and messages. Okay. So let's go on. So a yarmulke. 
Mm -hmm. Did you bring it with oh, you tonight? Oh, I did. Yes, I did. So we talked earlier, and I thought, oh, would it be fun if I was wearing a yarmulke today? And we decided that this is worn by uh, men. It's traditionally worn by, by Jewish men mm -hmm. inside. So as a sign of respect and devotion to God, Jewish men are supposed to keep their heads covered all the time. Outside, they oh. typically wear a hat. Uh -huh. Inside, they would wear a yarmulke or a kippah okay. in Hebrew. And you definitely wear one inside a synagogue. So whenever you're in a synagogue, men have to wear this. Men have to wear that. And when they're outside, they wear another, some other hat. Some other hat. So they always have to have They're always supposed to keep their on the head. their head covered. Um, but women don't have to worry or wear Women anything? don't have to, although, again, depending on the denomination, a lot of women like to wear uh, a yarmulke. Oh, okay. Um, is this your Hanukkah? Or? Uh, actually, this was one that we had made for our daughter's bat mitzvah. Oh. And typically, you will see on the inside of a, of a yarmulke, the they will put what the special occasion mm -hmm. is and where it was and the date and stuff like that. And the kids can pick the colors and the trim and whatever okay. else they want. So it would be wrong of me to wear a yarmulke because I am not Jewish and I'm not in a synagogue. Correct. But if, if I you was were, visiting a synagogue. If you were in a synagogue, you would be expected to wear one. Okay. But outside of a synagogue, it would be wrong for you to wear one. Wrong. Okay. Um, let's talk Israel. Okay. So I remember there was World War II. Mm -hmm. Terrible things happened. Um, after the war, they made a place in the Middle East for Israel. Okay. Um, although I do recall in the Bible, they talk about Israel quite a bit. So yes. it's a little confusing. It's new in the 1940s, but then it's been there for thousands of years. Right. So it has been there for thousands of years, and the Jews actually spent a good deal of time there. Um, but they got um, kicked out a lot. Yeah. They were overrun. They were oppressed. They were exiled. Um, at, at the time, um, so the, the three patriarchs are Abraham, his son Isaac, his son Jacob. Jacob had 12 sons. Mm -hmm. And one of his sons was Joseph, who was his, one of his favorite sons, so his brothers got together and sold him off to slavers. Yeah, so he wound up in Egypt. And mm -hmm. so when there was terrible famine in the land of Israel, which they called Judea or Samaria or lots of different other names other mm -hmm. than Israel, um, the, Jew, the rest of the Jews went to Egypt because Joseph was in charge of making sure that the Egyptians weren't starving. So for a very long time, the Jews prospered in Egypt until the political atmosphere changed there and they became <laughs> slaves. Uh -huh. So again, they got, they, when they left, the story of, of the Exodus, which is recounted in the holiday of Passover, the Jews left Egypt and went back to Israel. But again, they got kicked out a lot of times. They were expelled. So actually, um, the British took over that area, that, that part of the Middle East. Mm -hmm. um, they called it Palestine. But in, right after World War I, when they defeated the Ottoman Empire, so that it was called the British Mandate, mm -hmm. and they did allow Jews to emigrate there. And there were obviously lots of Arabs already living there because they'd mm -hmm. been living there for a while. Um, and then in 1948, the British said, we're getting out of here. We don't want to be in charge of this territory anymore. And the United Nations came up with a partition plan where a little part of the land would be Israel and it would become mm -hmm. the Jewish state. And another part of it would be what then was called Transjordan. And that would be where the Arabs would go. And of course, some Arabs were getting... Um, kicked out of mm -hmm. what used to be their home right. when the Jews took over that part of Palestine. So before independence was even granted in 1948, the Arabs all around the state of Israel were getting ready to attack, oh, which yeah. they did in mm -hmm. 1948, and they did again in 1956, and they did again in 1967, and again in 1973. There's been a lot of wars, mm -hmm. um, of virtually all of which the Israelis have won. So every time they would have a mm -hmm. war, they would get more and more territory. So in 1967, they actually defeated all the armies around them, and that's when they reoccupied um, Jerusalem. Jerusalem had been sectioned, you know, kind of mm -hmm. sectioned like Berlin. There was East Jerusalem, which belonged to the Arabs, and there was Jerusalem on the other side, which was the part that the Jews had. So they reunited Jerusalem. They got the West Bank. They got um, part of the Gaza Strip, and they got the whole Sinai Peninsula. Mm -hmm. And then... Um, 
1973, I think, they got some land from Syria, the Golan Heights from Syria. So each time they had one of these wars, they would collect more and more land. Mm -hmm. Now that they're talking about peace again, the two-state solution is how to divide up, how to, how to have Israel give back some of what they won mm -hmm. and, you know, in exchange for um, secure borders right. and not having people shoot rockets at them all the time. <laughs> which unfortunately still happens. So. Right. Um, so is Israel now in part the same place that the ancient Israel was in? Yes. J Jerusalem was the ancient capital of, of mm -hmm. Israel, and it is the capital of Israel today. How much time passed between, you know, 1948 and the last time there was an Israel? Was it like thousands of years? F thousands of years. Okay. The, I th if I remember my history, I think the second temple was destroyed in 70 the year 70, oh. and that was about the end of it being the Jewish homeland, when the temple was destroyed and the Jews were exiled. So the, the Jewish people had no homeland for a long time? Long time. So they dispersed? They dispersed. Everywhere? It's what's known generally as the diaspora, and they are all over the, all over the world. Um, sometimes the neighboring countries around Israel refer to them as the Zionists. Yes. Is that meant to be a, a bad word? Because they're not happy with you. No, they're not. Zionism is wanting the return of Jews to the land of Israel, to what we consider our homeland that God oh. promised us. So Zionists, a and these days, actually, Zionists are not all Jews. Um, and in fact, a lot of Zionists were not religious Jews at all. They just wanted there to be a Jewish homeland. They okay. wanted the homeland back that they believe God promised them in, in, the, in the Torah. So... Um, Zionism is not looked upon uh, fondly by people who don't want more Jews coming to Israel. Oh. Um, but nowadays, even evangelical Christians are Zionists because, like we were talking about in Revelations, they want there to be a Jewish homeland because that's what they think is one of the mm. things that will usher in the end So times. if I call you a Zionist or if I say I'm a Zionist, that's... That's not a bad thing. It's not a bad thing unless you are saying it derogatorily yeah. because you don't want me to go yeah. to Israel. And I don't want be, you to go there. Be That's one more, well, live there. Yeah. Be one more, one more Jew who's staking a claim in, in the state. Okay. Um, so World War II, um, that was the, the Holocaust. Right. So you had the, the Jewish people, starting in Germany, I guess, um, being persecuted way more than persecuted, um, yeah. decimated. Right. Um, so what was it about Jewish people that Hitler didn't like? Well, throughout history, the Jews had always were traditionally the scapegoat. Um, every army wanted to defeat them. Every country they were in wanted to kick them out or make them mm -hmm. convert. Um, there's a lot of people that aren't sure why that is. It, you know, is it because they were rich and had all the wealth? Well, there were pogroms in Russia and Poland, and the Jews were the poorest of the poor. So mm. that wasn't it. Um, was it because their religion was different? Well, it might have been. Um, but a lot of people have different religions. Yeah. And so it, it just always kind of has been the case. There are some people that say it's because the Jews claim that were the chosen people. Uh -huh. And the Jewish joke is... Uh, enough already, God could choose somebody else yeah. because it hasn't really worked out all that well. Um, but Hitler was just the most recent to get into his mind that all of the problems in the world were because of mm -hmm. Jewish domination. Okay. So, so about five to, we have, this is our sign, we have to wrap up. Oh, okay. Um, <laughs> so about thought, five to 12 million Jewish people were probably killed so during the Holocaust. Six million Jews from all over Europe, Russia, mm -hmm. um, you know, all of the countries that, that were occupied were systematically killed, mm -hmm. um, as well as other people that the Germans didn't like. Um, gays, gypsies, mm -hmm. uh, communists. And then there's political Holocaust deniers who claim that this never happened? Is yeah, right? because um, they think the Jews are doing it to get sympathy, or there's people that think the Jews did it so that they could get the state of Israel. Um, you know, there's plenty of, you know, documented proof this yeah, happened. Yeah, the, the Germans kept really yeah. good records, okay. and yeah, it really happened. All right, well, we're out of time. Okay. Um, I'm sorry to stop this. We had so much more to talk about. Maybe we'll come back uh, another time. Okay, we could do that. Um, so, our next show is on June 13th. Um, stay tuned for Stranger Music and What the Bleep coming up next. And thanks for watching. High five.
a good aim, Keith.